Okay, in this video we're going to talk about how to use double angle formulas, that would be these up here. We're going to use these to solve some equations. See, so far we know how to do things like solve uh, maybe something like this, 2 cosine of x is equal to 0. We can do that, pretty good at that. We even talked how to, about how to do sine of 2x is equal to 0, that was in the last few lessons. But what do we do whenever we combine them? See, we haven't learned that so far. We do not know how to solve an equation that involves both a cosine of regular x and a sine of a 2x, a double angle, right? So what we need to do is we need to rely on these formulas that we have up here. That would be the sine of 2u, instead of x, I'm using u. The sine of 2u is 2 sine u cosine u. So what I'm going to do here is, knowing that the double angle formula is such, I need to rewrite the equation as 2 cosine x plus, and then I'm going to replace sine of 2x with this up here, the, si the 2 sine cosine. Still using x as my angle, I'm going to set that equal to 0. Now when I do that, what I notice is that I can go ahead and I can factor out a 2 cosine x, because both the first and the second terms have that. So if I factor out 2 cosine x out of the left side, I'm left with 1 plus, I already have the 2, but I need the sine x, and that is equal to 0. And this brings me to two separate equations that I can use to solve for x. The first equation is going to say this, either 2 cosine of x is equal to 0, or 1 plus sine x is equal to 0. There's two separate ways that I can go. All right, well, this being the case then, this being the case then, I'm going to divide both sides by 2 over here. I still have 0 on the right, so really the cosine of x is equal to 0. And if I draw back on my knowledge of the unit circle, and I remember that cosine is directly related to the x-coordinate on the unit circle, then x-coordinate of 0 occurs here and here, right? This is an x-coordinate of negative 1. This is an x-coordinate of positive 1. So the 0 is right in the middle. That means that my answers are 90 and 270. Now, let's go over here for just a second. Let me mark those, and we'll come back to them. Let's go over here and let's solve this. Now, if I have sine of x is e plus 1 is equal to 0, that means that the sine of x is equal to negative 1. And drawing back on my knowledge of the unit circle, I remember that the sine is directly related to the y-coordinate on the unit circle. In order to get a, one, a negative 1, here's positive 1, 0 is in the middle, negative 1 is down here, right? So that only occurs at one location. That's at 270 degrees. So I, I see these actually repeat themselves, don't they? So if I put it all together, I notice that my answers are only 90 and 270. Now this doesn't say anything up here about solving in the interval. That means I need to include every single solution. So not only is 90 a solution and 270 a solution, but I could go 360 plus 90. 450, 450 degrees, that would be a solution. And I could go another 180 degrees after that. And then I could go another 180 degrees after that. And I could keep rotating around. So we drew the angles in, and what we notice is that they form a straight line. That means that, if you recall on the, let's see, this was lesson 5-3 that we did. If they form a straight line, that means I can list them as one solution. I go with the first answer, that's pi over 2. x is equal to pi over 2. And I say that answer goes up in multiples of pi, 180 degrees. And that's my solution to this problem. I don't even need to worry about this stuff on the right because that's included already. The 270 is just a repeat of this answer. Okay, let's go over and let's solve this one. Now, we know how to solve cosine of x is equal to 0. We know how to solve cosine of 2x is equal to 0, but we're not really sure what to do until this point when we have cosine 2x and cosine of 1x, right? So let's draw up on our knowledge of the double angle formulas. And you see there's a lot of different ways that I can do this. But if you recall, in past lessons, what I always try to do is I try to get everything to be the same function. In this case, I want everything to be cosines. So there's three different forms of the double, co of the double angle formula for cosine. I want to pick the one that involves only cosines. So I'm not going to use the bottom one, because that would be inefficient. I'm not going to use the top one, because as cosine and sine, I'm going to stick with this middle one, 2 cosine squared u minus 1. That's the one I'm going to use because it's only cosines. So I'm going to replace this over here, this cosine of 2x. I'm going to replace it with 2 cosine squared of x minus 1. That's plus cosine of x, and that's equal to 0, right? So I've just replaced it. Now, with that being said, this looks like a quadratic formula, doesn't it? It kind of looks like a parabola problem. I'm going to rewrite them so it goes like this. 2 cosine squared of x plus the cosine x next, the minus 1 last, and then I'm going to set that equal to 0. 
And the whole reason that I did that, the reason that I went through and I wrote it in that particular order is because now I can factor it. And if you know how to factor, whatever you go to do to factor, you know that it would end up with this, 2 cosine of x minus 1, and I have cosine of x plus 1. You can check that on your own. So, that being said, that means that I have two equations that I can draw from this. Either 2 cosine x minus 1 is equal to 0, or cosine x plus 1 is equal to 0. This leads me to two conclusions. Over here on the left, either the cosine of x is 1 half, or the cosine of x is equal to negative 1. Well, over here on the right, this is actually easier because I can draw my knowledge of the unit circle, and I remember that this is directly related to the x-coordinate. Cosine is directly related to the x-coordinate on the unit circle. So if I'm looking for an x-coordinate of negative 1, positive 1 is on the right, negative 1 is over here on the left. It turns out that my only solution is pi from the right side, 180 degrees. On the left, I have a cosine of 1 half. I'm going to use this circle over here for right. 1 half would be somewhere over here, wouldn't it? There's about one half where that dotted line is. So it's not exactly on an axis, it's somewhere in between. That means I need to use all students to take classes. Cosine is positive in the first and fourth quadrants. Cosine means adjacent over hypotenuse. That would be 1 over 2. That means the third side we know is the square root of 3. That's a 30, 60, 90 triangle, isn't it, folks? And that means if I'm going across from the square root of 3, that means this is 60 degrees and this down here is 60 degrees as well. That means I have two solutions. My solutions up here are pi over 3, and my solution down here is 300 degrees, which is 5 pi over 3. So, I notice here that I have three solutions. If I was to put those all together on one graph, it would look like this. My three solutions would be up here, down here, and then to the left at pi, right? None of which form a straight line. That means I need to write this as three separate solutions, all as multiples of 2 pi. So my solutions are x is equal to pi over 3 plus 2n pi, pi uh, let's see, 5 pi over 3 plus 2n pi, and the third solution is pi plus 2n pi. And those are the three solutions to this problem. Now, if that makes sense, in the next few examples, we'll be working with the double angle formula again, I believe and we're going to use it to write some equations and some expressions.